Hey, my name's Josh, and welcome to another episode of my new podcast that I have not named yet. Still don't have a name for it yet. I'm okay. I don't want to spend a lot of creative energy coming up with a name for something like this. I will at some point, I promise. If you have any ideas, let me know. Um, but I just wanted to kind of have a place to get my thoughts out, to to just kind of talk, um, kind of talk out loud, think out loud a little bit. I'm an internal processor, so normally I just, all the stuff just rattles around in my head all day long. Um, so I thought it might be good to, to get some of it out there. Maybe it's interesting to you. Maybe it's helpful to you. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just kind of therapeutic for me. Um, won't be just me all the time. I'll bring in other people, have some conversations. It's one thing I liked about my last my last podcast. I had a lot of really good conversations with some really good people. So I'll do some more of that maybe later. But today, but today I just want to talk about trust. And you know, different people might think differently. Like what comes to mind when you hear the words trust? I know a lot of people think of like a trust fall. You ever done those at like a corporate or or school like team building activity where you try to catch people and um, or you have a friend that's kind of messing with you and they, they, they purposely drop you because they think it's funny. It's not, it's mean. <laughs> um, but that, you know, that blind kind of trust fall is what maybe, maybe that comes to your mind. Maybe it's a, it's a sports thing. Like for me, it's, you know, uh, Culpepper, Tristan Moss to throw it deep, uh, even when he's double covered. Um, you know, trust can look different for a lot of people. A lot of people think about trusting people. Um, also trusting God. I have this tattoo. If you guys know me, Psalms 37, five, uh, I trust him it's from Psalms 37, five. It's commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he'll bring it to pass. And it's very important to trust God. Um, he's got a plan for your life. He, he, he wants what's best for you. And he also can deliver it. He's the almighty God created the universe. So if anyone can, can come through for you and take care of your needs to help you along the way, it's God, right? Um, so trusting God is extremely important, but, but we also need to trust people. And I'm someone who has a hard time probably trusting people because I think it's just easier to just do it myself. Um, I'm like, I don't need anybody, me and God, we can, we can take care of it, whether it's, you know, plans or, or, uh, dreams or career goals or, or just, just at work or even just like, um, driving in a car. I don't, I don't necessarily trust people very well. I, I was just driving today and we're, you know, it's a two turn lane situation. And the guy on the inside, I was like concerned that he like, wasn't going to turn in sharp enough. And so I turned like extra wide, not nothing dangerous or nothing bad, but just kind of like, I just remember thinking to myself, oh man, I don't, I don't know if I trust this guy to take this turn right. And that's probably not a big deal in that situation. Now, obviously, depending on what's going on around you, it, it could be a big deal if you're not staying in your lane and you're not, or you're going too fast or doing different things. But didn't grand scheme of things that had no effect on anything, but, but I just have a hard time trusting other drivers. Like I think, you know, in the winter when the weather's bad, I'm like, I trust myself to go to, to go a speed where I'm comfortable, where I'm going to be okay to stop what I need to, to get out of a skid if I need to, or whatever. I don't trust the people around me though. Um, so I don't like to drive in snowstorms, not because I have a problem with it, but because I don't trust the people around me and I don't, um, you know, it's a bummer to, to get an accident because you stopped correctly and somebody around you didn't, um, that you're in control of your car, but they're not. And so, so trusting people can be difficult at work, right? Like delegating stuff or asking other people to help you out with things can be tough, but you don't want to do all the work yourself. There's people, uh, under you or, or coworkers with you, to do things for you so you don't have to do it all yourself. So, so finding ways to delegate. Um, and I just don't, it's, it's a, a problem for me that I'm figuring out more and more is, is asking for help. Part of it is I don't want to be a burden to people. And I don't know, maybe there's something deeper there in my childhood or something. I don't know. I am seeing a therapist these days, so maybe, maybe she'll help me figure that out. But then the other side of that is trusting people. I don't want to ask for help because I know if I do it myself, it will get done, or at least it may not get done. Maybe I don't do it, but at least it's on me and I can, I can feel better knowing it's on me. But if I trust somebody else to do it and they don't do it and they don't come through for me, man, that's frustrating. That's really frustrating. And so I would rather just do it myself, right? But I think you have to be able to trust people. I think we need people in life. That's one thing that I'm learning is even though I'm an introvert, even though I like to just kind of do stuff myself, uh, we do need people. We have to have people in our lives to help us out, um, to get through life. You can't do it all on your own. And so I think what's important then is 
is knowing who to trust and when you can trust them. Because to trust someone, they have to be both willing and able to come through for you. And I think that's the key there is that they have to both of those things, right? My tattoo about trusting God. You can trust God because he is willing and able. Able, never had a question with that. All my life grew up in the church. The fact that the almighty God created the universe, created us all powerful, I never had a problem with that. To me, it makes too much sense. You look at the world around you, there is intelligent design. It was created by a creator. Um, never had a question for that. God is all powerful. No problems with that. For me, the struggle's always been, yeah, but does he want to help me? Does he care about my life, right? I know that he can do miracles, but does he want to do miracles for me? And so that's been the struggle with me. And that's kind of where I'm questioning, wondering things. That's where my, so again, God has to be both willing and able. And so when I got the tattoo, that was more the reminder is not that God is able to come through for me in whatever situation, pay my bills or whatever it might be, you know, heal a sickness or something. It's, is he willing? And, and I got this as a reminder. Yes, he is. God absolutely has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life and he wants to help me live out this plan. Again, that's why, that's why the verse says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will bring it to pass. If you commit your way to the Lord, he's, it's his job to make it happen. Whatever plans that he has for you, just do what he's telling you to do and he'll make it happen. I'm not going to preach a sermon on that. I've preached enough before on that, that topic, but, but I think that's important is, is the person willing and able. I told you, you know, I was at summer camp a couple of weeks ago and I was running games and Jocelyn was able to help me um, full time this year at games. That was her job was to she was on games with me. The two of us did games together. And that's great. I love her. I love spending time with her. It is it's amazing that I that I could do that with her because I like being with her. But I'll say this, if she wasn't actually helpful, it wouldn't have been a good thing if she couldn't actually like if I couldn't trust her to, to you know, help me figure out the points, to help me, um, whether it's carry stuff out to the field or just help me stay more organized or follow the rules or, or think through the different you know possibilities and problems of these games. If she wasn't able to do all that stuff, the fact that I like her wouldn't have made up for that. If that makes sense, right? It still would have been difficult. In fact, it might have been more frustrating. Um, cause I love my wife and in those situations, if I'm frustrated and things are difficult and she's not helping, it would, could end up being more frustrating than that. Thankfully she was helpful. She is helpful. Um, but it's, but I had a lot of people or I have people sometimes that'll offer to help with those sorts of things. And I'm like, actually it is easier to do it myself. It's actually, it's just going to get more frustrated if I have to explain that to you. I think of the, the, the episode of the office. Uh, I think it's like, uh, take your daughter to work day. And there's, I think it's Toby's daughter. I think the little girl is asking, um, Angela, if he can help with, with the setting up for this party or whatever. And, and Angela's like, no, you'll just make it more difficult basically. Um, and we all know of kids. Like I think of my nieces and nephews when they were little, like helping us, helping us carrying the groceries or something like that. Like, yeah, it's cute and it's fun, but it's not actually helpful. Like typically it's, it's easier if I just do it myself. And so not the job again, be very clear. Jocelyn was not like that. She was actually helpful. But again, just, she was just there cause she was cute and not helpful. Um, and didn't actually have the, the knowledge and the skills to help me. Then it, then it's not that good, right? It's, it's not that helpful. So again, you gotta be willing and able to help me with that. Right? So picture of trust I use, you know, Culpepper to Moss, that example, or even like Kirk Cousins throwing to Justin Jefferson um, in, in Buffalo, right on that fourth down, he threw it up to Justin Jefferson because a lot of receivers can be willing to go get the ball in that situation, but how many receivers can actually go up and get the ball and come down with it? And so that's why your trust is important is again, it's one thing to, to want to be able to do that. It's another thing like, can you actually come through? Are you actually helpful? in this situation, um, you know, when Culpepper was trusting Moss in double, triple coverage, it's because he knew Moss had the ability to actually go up and get it, right? Surprise, 
my example is is a sports example because that's that's what I know, right? Um, but you know, thinking in basketball, if if you take the shot versus you know if you're double coverage and take the shot anyway, it's because you trust yourself to make that shot more than the person who's open next to you, right? Uh, I think of Michael Jordan, Steve Kerr. Uh, there was a finals game where Jordan, every you know, he always took the final shot. Everybody knew he was taking the shot, but he was double covered. He made the right basketball move by passing it to Steve Kerr, and Steve Kerr made the shot, and they won. It's it's the right basketball move, but only if you trust that person to make the shot. I don't care if they're open. If I trust myself to make it, sometimes you trust yourself more to shoot in a double team than, than a, a teammate that's wide open. Again, whether you should or not, I don't know. Um, depends on the situation but technically the right basketball move would be to pass out of the double team um i look at you know steph kerr in the gold medal games gold medal game this year at the olympics one of the greatest shots ever as far as like contacts and what it meant and winning gold uh he hit that shot that three over double coverage he was covered pretty well by two guys and you watch the video lebron james is open on the other wing like nobody's near him and LeBron James is the highest scorer in NBA history, right? Nobody's ever scored more points than him in the history of the game. But Curry trusted himself to take that shot over two people more than he trusted LeBron to take that shot by himself. And I, I don't know, you know what was going through his head at the time, and, and there's a lot to that, right? Curry's the best shooter to ever play the game, um, you know, more than Ray Allen or Reggie Miller. Huge respect for those guys. But Steph Curry is the best shooter to ever do it. So... So there's that one thing, right? As good as LeBron is, Steph Curry is the best shooter ever. Um, this is not meant to be a shot at LeBron, although if you know me, you know how I feel about LeBron. But in that situation also, Curry was hot and he was hit. I think he hit two or three in a row, like just before, like literally the last two or three possessions before that. He was very hot at the moment. He was like, I'm going to win this game. And in double coverage, he trusted himself more than he trusted his teammate, LeBron James, who was wide open. And so I think navigating that again that's sports but using it in life like navigating when should i just do it myself and when should i trust somebody else to do it uh whether again whether it's an assignment at work or um you know you need help with asking for help for finances or accountability partners or um any sort of thing that you that you might need or 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 are trying to trust people with um, I think it's understanding who in your life is both willing and able, right? I love my wife. I trust her with, with my life, with almost anything. Um, and she's obviously willing to help me in any situation, but, but if she can't help me, if I'm, you know, falling off a cliff, she's not strong enough to catch me. She's very strong, um, but I'm a big guy and she, as much as she would give everything she could to try to hold me up, she would not be able to. And so that's that idea of like just because someone's willing doesn't mean they're able and just because they're able doesn't mean they're willing right there might be some people who have um are very smart with finances but if i don't know them personally and and they don't want to help me then it doesn't matter how good they are with finances if they can't help me with that right um so that that both willing and able and knowing who and you need to trust people and know who in your life is willing and able but also for yourself i think you need to be honest with yourself on what you are able to do right you know i think i talked about if, if people say oh yeah i can help you i'll, I'll do this because they want to be helpful but then they don't actually have the time to do it then it just kind of hangs over your head for a while and you're like you could just t just tell me no right away just tell me you don't have the time be honest with yourself to know that you don't have the time or this isn't a priority for you and you're not going to do this. And I'm okay with that because I'll figure something else out. Um, but just being honest, right? I had a friend, I'm not going to say enough that you guys can figure out who it is. Um, I don't think they watch this podcast, but I don't have that many friends, so it could get around to them at some point. So I'll just say I had a friend who who offered to, to do something for me and was like, don't worry about it. I'll get this. Uh, you don't have You don't have to help me with this. And I was like, great, in theory, and they were trying to be really nice, but I was like, in theory, that's great. But I think it'll go better if I'm there. I think it'll go better if I help. And again, I appreciate um, them being willing to help, but I don't think they had the ability to take care of this situation all by themselves. Nothing against them, but, but I think it, it went better that I was there and helped in that situation. So I think 
again, being honest enough with yourself, but then being honest with the people around you, like knowing who you can trust with what. All right. So again, I don't, I don't have all this figured all out. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Um, if you, you know, you know me, I, my job is, is at the church and the youth ministry, young adults, next gen stuff. I speak at chapels or at, at youth services. I'm doing this internship. Um, most of those teachings and things are things that are like thought through a little bit more, a little bit more of a polished point. Again, there's still things typically that I'm going through that God's talking to me about. So I'm sharing with other people. Um, but if you ever get one of those sermons, that's a little more polished and like got a point to it. And I know exactly what I'm trying to prove. And it's, it's something that, that I, that I've thought about enough and feel like I have a good enough grasp that I have a resolution on it. I try not to teach from, again, I, I teach from authenticity, like stuff that I've that thought about or dealt with, but I try not to, to preach out of stuff that I'm still wrestling with now. If that makes sense. Like, cause I don't want to give you more questions, right? When I preach from the stage, I want to have more answers. Obviously there's going to be questions. There's going to be some wrestling through it and thinking through it. Um, but but this is more of that. This is more of the unfiltered, unprocessed kind of thoughts um, that I'm still going through. And I think trusting people is is a difficult thing for me right now. And it's something I'm working on. But I think a lot of us have trust issues because we've trusted the wrong people. We, we've we had, maybe it's a big situation where we've trusted somebody and they let us down. Whether it's with like, you know, a, a secret or a relationship or financially, um, or maybe say it is something at work. You 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 thought somebody was gonna was gonna take care of that for you, and they didn't. So now you're stuck, um, having not done it, having the thing not accomplished. Um, so so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just shut down and not trust anybody ever again, and just say, hey, I'll just do this myself. I'm all right. I don't need anybody else. But we do need people, and so the problem with so the problem is we do need people. So you can't completely shut people out. You can't do everything by yourself. You do need people in your life, right? God created you with a specific plan and a purpose for your life, but he didn't create you to do it alone. He definitely gave you what you need to do it, but including that is the people in your life. He gave you the people in your life to help you accomplish the things that he has called you to do, right? So so that's important that we have people in our lives. So what we need to do instead of just cutting everybody out, we need to know who do we need to cut out? Who can we still trust? And in what areas can we still trust them, right? So if somebody is not good at managing money, don't trust them with your finances, right? Maybe you can trust them with a secret. Maybe you can trust them um, to do a project at work, but but maybe don't trust them with money if they're having a hard time managing their own money, right? It's a simple example, um, but it's understanding, again, which which people you can trust and where. I'm not saying you got to cut out everybody. Maybe there's some people in your life that you're like, I'm never going to trust that person again. Because the thing about trust is what they say, like it's, you lose it in an instant, but it takes a lifetime to gain it. Right. So it, trust is a delicate thing. You don't have to trust everybody. And you, there's some people you don't trust at all. Some people you trust in different situations. Again, don't have this all figured out, still learning, still growing in this area, but it's just something that I wanted to share something that I wanted to kind of think out loud to you guys about this. If you have advice, if you have opinions, thoughts on it, please let me know. Um, again, if there's anything else you want me to talk about, but because I do, I am a fan of intentionality and not wasting anybody's time. Um, and I'm not just talking just to talk. I like something that you can take home that you can think about take away. So I am going to have three, four takeaways for you. The first of them, first one is for you to be trustworthy. You have to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself, even more so than being honest with the other person. If you don't have the time to do it, if it's not a priority for you, then tell them that you need to let people know that if you, you might want to, to help them, but if you don't have the ability to do it, I would love to, if you're having car troubles, I would love to, to help you with that. I don't know how I still call my dad when I need help with stuff. So don't, don't expect me to be able to, you know, other than maybe a simple jump, um, a couple little things here or there. Um, I can change my own oil. I don't because we have a Valvoline just down the road and my garage isn't really big enough to do that anyways. Um, and I just, the time that it takes, I'd rather just to go to Valvoline and do it there. But 
But other than that, like the basic, basic stuff, I can probably put air in your tire. I helped change a friend's tire um, not that long ago. I was pretty proud of myself for that. Um, she had a flat. So I can do some stuff like that. But if it's more than that, I'm not going to be helpful. As much as I want to, just to be honest, I'm not going to be helpful. And I think you need to be honest with yourself on what you can do and honest with other people as well. If somebody asks you for something, be honest with them. The second thing that I want you to remember is not everybody deserves your trust. And I say that in a, again, they might be a great person, but if they can't come through for you, if they don't have the ability to do it, it doesn't matter how willing they are. Um, don't trust somebody, you know, don't trust an alcoholic to watch your drink. It's a bad example. Don't drink. I don't drink. I, I'm not going to tell you to drink, but, um, you know, don't trust me with a box of glazed donuts. Um, although I'm gluten-free now, so I'm not supposed to eat those, but if they're gluten-free donuts or if I cheat on my diet anyways, I might eat one because I don't have, you know, as, as I'm a nice guy, I might be willing to, but I, um, do not have the self-discipline to just ignore, um, you know, a box of Krispy Kreme sitting on my kitchen table. So I don't have that yet. It's something I'm working on, but just understanding that not everybody deserves to be trusted in everything. And it's no shade. Again, it, you can love someone and still not trust them in certain areas, right? If they've hurt you before, you don't need to trust them again, right? You, you don't, you can still love them. You can still care for them. You can still pray for them. You can still, still help them, maybe trust them in other areas, but you don't have to trust them with everything again. If they've, if they've lost that trust before the four, the third thing that I want to say is that you do need people. You do need people in your life. So, so you can be selective in who you trust and how often you trust them and what you trust them with, but you do need people. So don't, don't close off everything and try to do it all yourself. Um, and I'm saying this to myself, I'll be watching this back later because this is a good reminder for me. Um, cause I'm, I'm definitely the kind of person that's tempted to just now nah, just do it myself. Um, but that's not healthy. That's not the way that God created us. That's not the best way for you to be productive in life at all. The last thing that I want to share is I just want to remind you again that God is both willing and able to come through for you in every situation. It's hard to trust God because you don't see him because it's hard to know. Um, does he have a plan for my life? Is he all powerful? Yes. Is he that good that he wants? And does he care that much about me? That like I said, that's kind of where my struggles have always been is I know he's all powerful, but is, is he all good? all loving as well? And does he care about me? And the answer is yes. Again, I, I'll watch this back. So I'm gonna have to remind myself on that, but he is, he does care about you. He does have a plan for your life and you can trust him because he is both willing and able to come through for you in really any situation that you need. But specifically in this life, when, when things may be difficult, whether it's financially or you're just struggling with, with purpose or, um, you know, any very different ways that, that you need God to come through for you. He is willing and able to do that. So you can trust him. So that's it. That's, I just want to remind you, um, and kind of deal with this trust issue thing myself. Thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, if you have ideas for a title or, or things you want me to talk about, I am going to have some conversations. It's not just going to be me talking the whole time. Cause that was one of the things I loved about my last, my last podcast is that I have to have some really good conversations. So I hope to have some good conversations, um, about some, a lot of different topics in this podcast as well. And, um, hopefully this was worth your time and hopefully you join me next time. Thanks.